Brant from Wolf on Wall Street Trade. It is December 28th, 2018, and I'm going to keep this video short because I'm getting ready to have a long weekend. So I have a daily chart of the S&P 500 up here, and coming into this holiday shortened week, Christmas, uh, we uh, got out of our shorts. I got out of my shorts at least. And the reason why was not because things were improving, it was because things were getting worse and worse into year end. And what I mean by worse is this. This is the energy sector, XLE, a 60 minute chart. And this is what I mean by worse. We had a downtrend because the entire market is in a downtrend, whatever um, major average you're looking at, it's in the downtrend, I can tell you right now. And they were breaking out of the bottom of these downtrends like the energy sector here. So you might think, well, you know, that's fantastic. You should short it and, you know, press your shorts. But actually, this is telling us that, you know, we're getting into the end of the year. The selling is intensifying. They're just dumping everything at this point. So I want to use that to my advantage. Take profits on shorts when others are dumping and then look to um, reestablish my position. So here's the daily chart of the S&P 500. And I'll just zoom in a little bit and we'll walk back and see what happened this week. So uh, here's the, oh, sorry, let me just scale this a little better. Here's the nightmare before Christmas. Uh, that was Christmas Eve. And we were closed for Christmas and then got this big rally when we came back. And uh, one more day of follow through on Thursday. And this is Friday here today, a little bit of a whimper uh, on the attempt to rally. I shared with uh, members, subscribers, what I believe is going on here and what I think uh, is behind this. And it's no big secret. I think everybody believes the same thing, which is pension fund uh, rebalancing, where they sell, <laughs> this is funny, they sell what um, worked, which would be bonds, and they buy what didn't work, which would be stocks. That's rebalancing at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, depending on the fund. And that appears to be what was happening. So if you go back to uh, the last week uh, video, I said, you know, we ended very ugly. We ended like this. Sorry, I have to scale this again. We ended like this. I said the only one thing that was kind of weird was that bonds were not being bid. And I'll show you what this looks like on a, let's go to a 60 minute chart. Okay, here's a 60 minute chart of SPY. And just to give you some context, here's the first major leg down from October, the consolidation, the 200 point uh, range in the S&P 500, and the second leg down. So we had a measured move target, a pretty extreme one actually for the S&P 500 of 2350. It hit that almost to the nose and that's not because, you know, I am have a crystal ball or I can forecast these things. It was just simply, a measured move and it's kind of a little bit unusual in my opinion for an entire index of 500 or 2000 stocks to uh, sell off that extremely uh, and meet that second leg measured move rather than a more conservative target but it did that so let's go back to that SPY 60 minute chart and I'll show you where we left off the previous week okay this is the 60 minute chart of SPY with the 30 year yield remember yields room uh, move opposite of bond prices, 30-year yield is in white. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Um, this is the second leg down. Remember, this was the, what I called at the time, the earthquake in fixed income, uh, discounting lower growth. So yields leading the entire market lower. So when we were um, coming into this week, the end of last week, the week before uh, Christmas, the one thing I said, you know, we ended on the lows of the day and it was horrible price action. The one thing I said that was kind of weird and I wasn't sure what was going on was that uh, the 30 year yield was um, making a higher low over here, as you can see. And basically what that means is that as stocks were selling off, bonds were not being bid as heavily. Now that I've had a chance to see what's happened this week, uh, I have a little different opinion of what this is, and I'll show you a little closer view. Here's a closer view of five minute chart of SPY. So here is the end of the previous week with the 21st, Friday the, the 21st here. And you can see that uh, the 30 year yield is starting to move up rather than down, which means that bonds, or at least the 30 year bond, wasn't being bid as heavily. So we moved into this week, and I'm gonna back this chart up and walk it forward so you can see how it looked in real time. Here's how we ended the week, Friday the 21st, 
with um, the 30-year yield diverging a little bit from the S&P and coming into this week. So Monday, got that nasty um, Christmas Eve sell-off. And here is Tuesday. Now watch what happens with the yields right here as the S&P gets bid. The 30-year yield explodes higher. That means bonds are being sold. Stocks are being bought. Okay. And we consolidate and move higher again into the afternoon right here. And then here is Thursday. The market consolidates and those same pension fund guys come right back in. I assume they're pension fund guys, but anyway, they come right back in and watch how over here the S&P rises and this 30 year yield shoots up with it, meaning bonds are being sold or at least the 30 year uh, treasury is being sold. So that, in my opinion, is what we were seeing. And then uh, today, everybody was looking for that to happen again on Friday. Uh, and I think traders were trying to front run that saying, you know, OK, well, we saw it twice this week that pension funds are rebalancing and we're going to try to front run that again. And I don't think it happened here on Friday because uh, there was no selling in this 30 year. So that is one aspect, the 30 year. And the other aspect that backed up this S&P or I'm sorry, SPY 60 minute chart again. This is that 200 point range or so and the second leg down. And this time I have the 10 year yield. So we saw a little bit of that same thing happen on uh, what was it Wednesday, I believe. But if we look see, here, it is on Wednesday. So bonds being sold and stocks being bought. And then it didn't happen here on Thursday and it didn't happen here on Friday. And what we basically have at this point is the 10-year um, and the five-year yield are diverging with the S&P 500, which means the bond market is not convinced about this rally whatsoever. And why should they be? Um, as far as the 30-year goes, I think that's specifically because um, these pension funds held 30-year treasuries and we're selling those to rebalance and simple as that. So whether that uh, continues into the last trading day of the year, which is Monday, uh, we'll see. So uh, in my opinion, you know, if both the 5, 10 and the 30-year, if they all look like this, they're all diverging, this would be a sell to me. So I'm watching the 30-year yield to see what happens next with that. As far as the broader market goes, um, it's a bearish market. You can't look at it any other way. You can say, okay, you know, this leg of selling is probably over and we're going to move on to something else. But we're making um, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. And it doesn't matter which index, if it's uh, the S&P 500 or if it's small caps over here or if it's uh, NASDAQ 100. Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. That's a downtrend. I want to use bounces and rallies to sell short into downtrends. Um, there's some other reasons as far as growth and all that goes. But um, for right now, we're just looking at this and there's not a single major average that's not in a downtrend. As far as the 2007-2008 analog that I've been covering since October, and it's funny now I see a lot of these investment banks are talking about the same analog this past week. Uh, this is pretty much where we would have ended. The second, first leg down over here, second leg down over here, and right about here. And if you look at the S&P 500, it's very, very similar. What I was pointing out with uh, a couple posts this week in the daily wrap is that if you are of the bullish persuasion, generally what happens, and I showed examples going back to 1926, is when uh, a moving average is broken. So a lot of times you, we all know that these moving averages are psychological levels and people pay attention to them and sometimes, you know, they'll act as support or a lot of times they'll act as support. But when they get broken and specifically when you get this death cross, and I hate this term death cross because it's like there's a death cross, you know, sell the market short. It's ridiculous to, to think about it in terms of that. But when you do have um, enough selling that you do have this death cross, what tends to happen and I showed a lot of examples of this, is that uh, if you are bullish and you think the market's going higher, wait for a test because more than likely you're going to get it. So I'll show you what it looked like in 2008 after this sell-off, which is about 20%, I think, almost the same as what we just went through. 
well, I, I don't get it to the uh, to the low of the day, but yeah, about 20%. So here's what happened next. Get a little bit of a uh, oversold or relief rally. Comes up to resistance and watch what happens. Test. Right there. Test. Okay, so if you look at the way the market um, sold off in 2015 and made a low, or 2016 and made a low, or even earlier this year, uh, February 2018, you got a price test. So you don't have to be this guy who's doing this. Watch. Should I buy here? Should I buy here? Should I buy here? Should I buy here? You let the market put in a low and you let it come back and test that low. So you know the area that it's going to test. And guess what? A lot of things improved at this test. It looks horrible on a daily candle right there. If you're just looking at it, it looks horrible. But a lot of things improved here. The 52-week uh, lows for the NYSE diminished. Um, transport started acting a lot better. So as prices were coming down, you could be licking your chops and saying, you know what? I want to buy this test, not trying to guess where the bottom is and trying to catch a falling knife. So that is the 2008 example. And then we got what I would consider a bear market rally. I'll just walk you through that to show you what it looked like. And it was bigger than this first rally here. So people who missed that, you had a, a great opportunity here. It was almost double in percent terms. And it eventually uh, hit resistance and then it rolled over and this level gets tested again and ultimately fails. And then we go into a really nasty bear market. Let me give you a couple other examples real quick because it's easy for me to roll these charts back and show you. So this, guess what this is? You can look up here and you can see uh, the symbol. It's S&P 500 and the date, uh, October 13th, 1987, the dreaded 1987. So here's what happened. Watch support breaks and you get a major sell off, right? Horrible. Uh, we have circuit breakers now, so hopefully something like that doesn't happen, but that doesn't mean the market won't sell off for an entire month like we just saw. So watch what happens here. Instead of being this guy, do I buy it here? Do I buy it here? Is it a buy here? Like what you hear on CNBC every night. Watch what happens. So if you miss this first rally, the first day, 5.33%, uh, then almost 9%, over 9% the next day. So a lot of traders probably felt horrible that they missed that, right? But guess what? Comes right back down. And what's it do? test. So if you are of the bullish persuasion and you think the market is going higher, you don't have to chase this stuff. Wait for the test. You have a lot of uh, advantages in waiting for that test. You have a good idea of where it's going to be. You know if uh, dynamics are improving. And I'll just show you what this looked like going forward. So yes, we did slowly recover. Here is the NASDAQ 100 from 2000. If I forgot to point it out on that last chart, uh, there was a death cross. Again, the yellow 50-day moving average was below the 200-day moving average. Okay, so here is the NASDAQ 100 after the all-time high. So we have a sell-off over here, right? And that sell-off is almost 27%. So again, instead of being this guy, do I buy here? Do I buy here? Is it a stocks to buy here? You can get this from CNBC any day, every day. So watch what happens, and I just want to make another point. We have that death cross here. Not every test is successful, but you do get the test. So here's the test in 2000, and here's what happened next. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom through real fast. It gets ugly. So not every test is guaranteed to pass. But in my view, it's a lot better than chasing a market that has already seen a big relief move and really doesn't have any improvement in um, terms of sectors, in terms of the growth concerns that the market is worried about. Do have some open trades and do have some trades that uh, I just got out of, just got out of this gold uh, last week and it is moving right up to my high end target which was 121.10 and I like how gold is acting a lot. Here's some trend lines. And as I was pointing out last week, so gold had sold off a lot. It did the work. It consolidated bullishly, broke out, consolidated bullishly again in a big uh, kind of, actually a, a series of bull flags and bull pennants. And it has a pretty decent little trend going over here. To me, it's a little bit extended. So I got out uh, last week 
right here at 119.25. And I am looking to re-enter that. Silver is starting to act well too. And we have a current short in natural gas. Here's a daily chart of UNG natural gas. And I just want to walk this back because I was bullish natural gas back here in September, October, and just went short natural gas. I want to show you some really great technical uh, price action. So here are the trend lines. I'm just going to walk this chart back a little bit. Okay, I have it walked back to uh, about September of 2018. So it's consolidating in this big range. It was acting well. Uh, it broke out of that range and then it started consolidating again. And this is when I was going nuts about uh, natural gas and really liking it. And it looks like um, there was probably like a Paris trade, short um, natural gas and long crude that started to get unwound right about here in October. These huge moves, so that's forced selling or positions being unwound. And then it uh, consolidated in this big triangle. So here we have a breakout, a bullish flag, and another breakout. It surpassed my um, measured move. And then it consolidated in this big triangle. And uh, we were taking a look at this saying, you know, maybe it's gonna go higher. So when it came down here, I wanted to see some, uh, you know, the buyers that were active here step in real quick. And if it was going to be a, um, like a shakeout and head higher than they needed to step up quick, that didn't happen and prices went lower. So this is what I did. I'm gonna change this to a 60 minute chart so you can see more clearly. I got short this last Thursday. Uh, right here so here's the first breakdown and a bear flag and now it has started to move lower again and it's doing so in these little flag formations and I'll show you on a uh, let's go to a 15 minute chart so there's the breakdown bear flag breaks lower another flag breaks lower again today so I've got the price targets out for that and I will update those as the price action develops but so far so good, so I'm happy with this and we'll be looking to get back in some other trades, gold and silver. But for the moment, um, I'm just gonna give the market some room and let it breathe and see what it does and not jump in to uh, any one position or any kind of one view of the market. We have got some major, major overhead supply coming up. Um, if the market gets that high and I gave you guys the different um, price levels I'm looking at right now but uh, you got major supply here and we have a very very clear downtrend so you have lower highs lower lows all the way down for every single major average but at the moment at least this second leg appears to be done and we'll see what um, well maybe it's not done we'll see there's some definite pension buying over here in my opinion so we'll see what happens into the start of next week. I suspect it's probably going to be a little bit slow because it is more or less like a four-day weekend for traders. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a fantastic weekend and have a very happy new year.